Okay, welcome to this video. Chusima is still here. So let's learn the generations of computer. Let's understand the different generations computer has gone to enable us what we have today um, in forms of our handheld computers and laptops. So when you talk about computer generation simply, it simply highlights the different technologies component that has been uh, used in building computers uh, from, uh, from this okay primitive device that is very big and that can fill up a room how have we involved from this big component in terms of computer size and capability to something very portable today that is actually what the uh, computer generation hopes to explain to us here so let's learn about them so starting with the first generation uh, ranging from 1945 to 1958 so the first generation, the major component that is known with the first generation is a magnetic ray, vacuum tubes, and electronic circuitry as switching device. Now, this is actually what the vacuum tubes look, look like. So the first generation, this is actually what they use in terms of storing data. Now imagine a computer that uses devices as big as this, and not just one, but many of them. Uh, that is what I mean by using switching device. So there are different ways it connect all these things to be functional. So this actually makes this device very, very uh, uh, big. And the capacity of storage is not actually that efficient to today. It's very primitive. So when you look at uh, the features of the fourth generation, this is what you find. They use vacuum tubes and punching cards to, um, to impute data and store data. Okay, they also they are very very large. They are very large in size. As you see them here, they always uh they are as big to be able to fill a room. So that is actually what the fourth generation computer looks like. Also, they produce a lot of heat while operating. They support many terminals. Okay, um, they also uh this like all these box here, these are what the computer is made up of. Look at a computer having all these uh, sections, um, terminals, always making it very big. They are also very expensive, yeah. Um, computers is not even considered by an individual only government institutions and all that can afford computer in this day so when you look at the likes of uh, the EDSA key that we talked about earlier they are the kind of computer that classified under the uh, the first generation okay so now the second generation ranging from 1958 to 1954 so the major component in the fourth generation is that uh, the vacuum tubes and magnetic ray were not replaced with semiconductors so semiconductors is where your uh, resistors capacitors and all that now instead of having something uh the magnetic uh the magnetic ray and vacuum tube that big stuff instead of having them as a memory component or instructional component they were now replaced with um, semiconductors, transistors and diodes and all that. This actually made uh, the computer very much portable. You see here, it's more like in a cupboard size. So the major features of the uh, third, uh, second generation, I mean, is that they are very large but smaller than previous generation. Uh, they also produce lesser heat than the previous generation than their predecessor. So they also have uh, better memory capacity uh with also many terminals they also have terminal but the memory is better than the what we have in the first generation their processor speed also is slower but better than the previous generation so they were also very costly and also people who are able to afford computers then were uh, organizations and institutions okay so that was the uh second generation then the third generation from 1965 to 1971 we experienced the third revolution in terms of computer development now this was this was actually when semiconductors the capacitors the transistors and all that were now replaced with a uh, processor okay they now have like a, uh, a device where instructions can be encoded and it will just control the functions of the computer so this actually makes computer very 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 small so uh, imagine that you have uh, this actually where we now started having like a board okay known as the motherboard like where all the instructions can be encoded so this actually drastically reduced the sizes of computer so this actually when we start having computers small enough like this to even sit on a desk okay so um some of the features of this third generation include that they are smaller in size uh with the help of integrated circuit where all those um where all those instructions are coded they become more smaller okay um they also produce lesser heat uh, there is no 
many terminals to make the computer to generate heat or uh, uh, you know in terms of capacitors and all that so it's compatible and generate less heat and also the inputs and the outputs improved now this is where we started having stuff like the keyboard and also how to innovate on the mouse and all that also uh, they have small memory components like the memory devices became smaller but the ability to store data became also very big now means computer can now store more larger data than the previous generation so also their speed also in increased to nanoseconds and they also they are expensive actually but it became accessible and affordable to an individuals so these are actually the features of the third generation then we move to the fourth generation from 71 to 82 now it was actually um with same features like the third generation but in more improved way so this is actually what will start having more better uh microprocessor it's known to use what is known as large scale integration that means um we are now able to in in encode and integrate more instructions uh, in a small chips like this and uh, this actually helped the computer to be more effective so the features of the fourth generation include that they are a very small in size they produce less heat improved technology also improved memory capacity and all that also they are much faster and also they are lesser expensive computers started getting into home but also we have from uh, uh, 82 to the date fifth generation also used a uh, technology known as a very large scale integrated circuit more like the fourth generation but uh, in more improved way so this is actually where we ha start having the likes of our laptop and desktop computer in more improved fashion hand heat computers all these things comes uh, in the uh, fifth generation we started having computer that is more very uh, very f small uh, produce lesser heat have larger memory capacity and also very fast so computer became very faster uh, in the fifth generation so um, they also be became uh, less costly and affordable household can now afford a personal computer now what you should understand is that the the fifth generation is more like uh, what we have today and also the future of computer so uh, if you look at this uh, the future of computer and when you talk about the future of computer there is nothing much more that is going to be changed uh, just like what we highlighted earlier so future of computer is going to be mostly based on the instructional component of computer improving the software aspect of computer and also um, electronic component of computer that means improving the hardware aspect of computer this, this is basically what is going to be changing when you talk about the future of computer so we can have devices that is going to be very smaller um, we have um, voice recognition technologies today in terms of computer so we are thinking about wearable computers like computers that are free from hand heat and all that like something that just operates just by you putting it on so so all these things are what the future of computer will look like but at the end of the day it's still going to be based on softwares uh, improved softwares and also improved components so we can make this component to be very small very tiny but it's still going to have a a physical component like a hardware component and also uh, it's still going to have like instructional component like the software okay so basically these are what you should look at for when it comes to the future of computer okay so um and this is also how computer has evolved from something very primitive as big as filling up a room to something that is portable to sit on our lap okay so that is it that is it about the generations of computer and um, i hope you you now have a better understanding of how we have involved to uh, what we have today in terms of computer technology okay so that is it for this video um, um if you have questions direct them through the appropriate channels and i will see you in the next one right now